Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is upon us, and along with it, a whole slew of GameCube style controllers. Most popular among these is the Power A Wireless GameCube Style Pro Controller. That's a mouthful, I know, but basically, Power A took the Pro Controller and the GameCube Controller, and. This Wireless Pro Controller took all of its styling cues from the past, including the long spongy trigger press. Now, I know what you're thinking as an informed consumer. But the Nintendo Switch doesn't even have analog trigger support. And you're right. So that means my reflexive response times are hampered for no other reason than nostalgia? Yep. But have no fear, my friend, because today I will show you how to change your triggers from this... ...to this. Ready? Go! Now, this is a pretty simple and easy mod. There are a few different ways you could do this, and I'm going to show you how I did mine. Here are a few tools you will need. A small Phillips head screwdriver, a hot glue gun, a drinking straw, and a sharp blade. An X-Acto knife or a box cutter will do. If you haven't already, make sure to remove the battery cover and batteries. The contacts are attached to the board and will prevent you from pulling this apart later. There are six screws accessible from the back that are easy to remove. Just make sure to keep these little guys in a safe spot. Now that you've done so, you can pull the shell apart. The board remains attached to the front portion of the controller and we never have to mess with this, so just carefully set it aside and you won't have to worry about destroying anything. The back portion has two more cover plates before we can get to the triggers, but already you can see how this works. When the trigger is fully depressed, the plastic tips come through and press the button membranes on the back of the board. All we are doing is closing that gap and removing the distance necessary to register a button press. There are two more screws holding in the cover plates to remove. Just be mindful that these are shorter than the previous six, but even if these get mixed up, it's not hard to tell them apart. The plate will now easily slide off to reveal the housing mechanism for the spring and trigger. The spring isn't under great tension, so you shouldn't have to worry about it flying across the room. Just clamp the trigger down slightly to the base plate here, and maneuver it through the shell to remove the whole group. Once removed, you just slide the base plate and spring off together. Now, you can clearly see the hole at the bottom of the trigger post here, and this is where you can get creative and add some material. I've seen others use screws or wooden dowels, but I wanted to avoid anything that could possibly be abrasive and damaging to the rubber membranes over time, so I chose hot glue. This is where the drinking straw comes in. Feed it over the trigger post as tight as you can get it so it will stay in place as we work with it. The straw will act as a form to hold the hot glue until it sets, and it will be the solid glue doing all the heavy lifting. Trim the excess, leaving only about a quarter to half an inch. It won't take much to get the job done. Now fill the cavity with the hot glue, trying to keep it centered so the glue can seep into the post a little bit as well. If you get the hot tip too close to the straw, the heat will deform it and you'll need to start again, so just take it nice and slow. Once it's filled, keep it vertical for a couple seconds until you can set it down without the glue running out and let it rest until it's cloudy and solid. You can take this time to work on the other trigger if you haven't already done so. Now, the added thickness of the straw around the post will most likely be enough to keep it from moving freely inside the housing, so score along this ridge here and remove the excess straw. Test that it moves freely within the housing. Now we're going to trim the hardened glue to fit. You can do this one of two ways. You only need an eighth of an inch to completely close the gap, so you can measure it out and cut it. If that's too much of a pain, you can place it back in the housing in the controller shell to mark a line using the shell as a guide. Just reassemble the spring and housing, place it back into the shell with the flat shelf sitting in the corresponding slot and the two prongs facing outwards that engage with the cover plate. Make sure it's sitting correctly and if it helps you can even place the plate back on to ensure everything is lining up. You want to make sure the trigger isn't being pressed down at all here and you can mark off exactly where you need to cut with a sharpie. All that's left to do is cut on the line. You may need to do some fine tuning, but you can always shave off a little more, even add some glue to the end if you cut it a little short. It's all depending on your preference. Before you completely reassemble the controller, you want to do a test fit. If you feel any resistance putting the shells together, don't force it. Most likely the button membrane is bunching up and you don't want to cause any damage. Just shave a little more and try again. 
Now, while I have this controller open, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick bonus mod as well. Really enjoying the feel of the controller, but when the batteries are in, you'll notice all the weight is up top and the handles just feel a little light because they're completely hollow. I'm going to glue some big old nuts in here and give this baby some heft. With nuts in place, just press the shell back together while being mindful of the button membranes and battery contacts. Six screws later and you're good to go. Complete. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this helpful, feel free to share the video with anyone else that might be looking to mod their new Power A controllers. If you did anything differently, let me know down in the comments. I look forward to seeing how creative you can be. Take care and happy smashing!